Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are joined by my father Danny for an update because you have finally bought your Z4 replacement. I have, finally. And yeah. it's not, it's not another silver. It's not another silver Z4, no. This is not the replacement. This is the Z4 which you'll actually hopefully by now have sold because yes. I don't think this video is going out for a few weeks or okay. so. So hopefully that's gone. If yep. not, there'll be a link in the description. But if we take a walk over there, we're going to go and show you what the new car is because it wasn't one that we actually test drove together. It isn't, no. I think you, we might have mentioned it in the videos previously, but it's not the 3 Series. No. It's not the S4. Not it's the not, SLK. It's not a CLK. Or SLK. Or CLK. SLK, you never looked at an SLK. That's true. <laughs> so it wouldn't be an SLK, would it? <laughs> no, no. Anyway, let's walk over there and uh, we'll show you what it is. So past that lovely R8, which I've still got on test, and nice. to this, which is your what? It's... Uh, E88 125 Cabriolet. So this is my new BMW 125i Cabriolet, or the E88 as it's known. And as you know, it went, we went through a bit of a process of looking at all sorts of different cars. I think the first car I test drove was a 325i. Then we drove that 335i, which was an auto, although those engines have got sort of fairly well-known issues with the turbos. We didn't have this on camera, but I test drove a 330i, which actually I really liked. But the main issue was, A, it was too expensive, just outside of my budget. And secondly, the folding roof is an amazing mechanism, but it really compromises the boot space. So, you know, when the roof's up, it's, it's a good boot space, but when the roof's down, you've literally got like a gap like that to sort of get things in and out. And I just thought that was actually a bit impractical. So then there was a bit of hiatus where I thought, well, you know, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. So I did consider an E89 Z4, which is the next gen that I think they came out in 2009. But again, they were just slightly outside of my price range, although I did drive a 23i and I liked, I mean, the interior is great. I really liked it. But again, it was just a bit beyond my, my price. So I think you suggested, Joel, I think at one point, and maybe it was on one of the previous videos, I can't remember, but you suggested the One Series Cabriolet, which I'd not really considered. So I, I began then looking at those and you know, had it had various ones saved on Auto Trader, looking in all the usual places, and decided that the one that I wanted was the 125, which is this one, got the three litre engine, 218 brake horsepower. And so then it was just a case of finding one that was relatively local that I could test drive, which I did a few weeks ago. And then this one came up on Gumtree actually, and this was exactly the spec I wanted because it's got the red leather interior, it's got the upgraded iDrive, the CIC version. It's got heated seats and cruise control. So yeah, it was everything I wanted. And it just so happened that it was en route to a holiday we had in Wales a couple of weeks ago. And so yeah, here we are with my 125i BMW. And I have to say, I'm really enjoying it. We will probably talk about that a bit more. So allow me to quickly interrupt this video to say a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, which is HelloFresh. When HelloFresh got in touch saying they wanted to partner up with the channel, I was super, super excited and jumped at the opportunity because HelloFresh is something that I've used a lot in the past and recommended to lots of my friends. Now, for those of you that don't know what HelloFresh is, it's a convenient, healthy, and really cost-effective solution to your everyday meals. And what's more is it all gets delivered straight to your door. HelloFresh has hundreds of recipes online that you can choose from. And the best thing for me about HelloFresh is that I am no real cook, honestly. I'm pretty bad at it. But the way HelloFresh is set up is you order what you want, then everything you need for that specific recipe comes in the box, along with instructions such as this, which for someone like me, who is quite a methodical person, I'm really good at following instructions, but sometimes when I've got to just make things up, I'm not great. So for someone who doesn't know too much about cooking and flavors and all that sort of stuff, it allows me to actually cook some pretty decent and really tasty things, which I'd never be able to do otherwise. I like the fact that it actually encourages me to try new things as well. This one I'm actually cooking tonight is a Mexican style beef wedges dish. And I'm actually someone with a nut allergy. And for me, 
I'm always therefore really nervous to try sort of other foods that I wouldn't normally try. And with HelloFresh, I'm completely safe from my allergy, but also just allows me to try things that I wouldn't otherwise be keen on. The best thing though, is that by using my code, it's Joel, you can get 50% off your first HelloFresh box, along with a further 35% off the next three. Also, they'll include three free gifts for you, which is very exciting. Make sure to take advantage of that now. Check the link in the description and the pinned comment below. Also on the screen now, you can see all the details. Thanks so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. And now, let's go back to my dad. He's gonna give us a nice overview of the interior of his new BMW 125i. So, as I was saying, I was looking out for a couple of months actually for just the right spec of the 125i. And I think, well, I know, I, I found it. And in fact, on the original invoice, the original owner of this spent six grand on extras. Just running through what we've got, we've got things like automatic lights, automatic wipers, more importantly to me than that, cruise control, which is just exactly the same as in the Z4. And then we've got heated seats. The other thing I should say as well, which I'm really thrilled about with this particular car, is it's the 2011 model. It was registered in February 2011, so it's on a 60 plate, but it's the LCI, which those of you who know about BMW's LCI is the sort of basically their sort of mid term upgrade or facelift and so this has got the heated seats but the the buttons are up here rather than down here as they are on the pre-lci and it's got the upgraded seats so if you can see you probably can't see on shot but there's a little button down on the bottom left of the seat which adjusts these bolsters here and it's got tilt adjustment so they're sports basically they're sports seats and they're really honestly they're super comfortable and it's a real obvious upgrade from my Z4 and then I really particularly like the red leather I mean I've always had a soft spot for sort of red leather interiors and never had one before so um, yeah I'm just really chuffed with it and oh yeah the other thing that I really wanted was the iDrive and it's the slightly widescreen version and then the added bonus was I only discovered this a couple of days ago just going scrolling through the iDrive menu that it's actually got Bluetooth audio so that's a real bonus you know on a 2011 car to have you know proper bluetooth audio there's no control on the screen or anything but i can control it from my phone and actually i can sk skip tracks from the one of the buttons on the steering wheel so that's pretty cool so yeah anything i don't like about the interior well the silver wouldn't have been my first choice because i you know obviously i'm an old man so i would have preferred a bit of wood veneer one thing there's no adjustment for the the steering into there's rake adjustment but there's not adjustment back and forward a few moments later oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> i've just discovered <laughs> that the what is that called joel it's rake when it goes up and down isn't it and what's and it I just said I'll just do that again so I can get yeah. the B-roll in. Yeah. Actually, it does. It does. Well, there's well, some clarification on that one. There we go. Continuing. The only other thing I don't like is this cup holder. So there's only one cup holder. In the non-iDrive versions, there are two cup holders because there's another one here. But in this version, there's only the one. And because of where the armrest is, I mean, this isn't exactly a massive bottle, but I can only fit it in by it sort of, you know, going over there. And then it's sort of in the way of the iDrive. So... So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's not exactly the most major problem in the world, but it's, you know, it's a little bit of an issue. One of the minor issue with this car, it's clearly had someone has recovered the steering wheel and they've not done a perfect job. So there's a little bit of loose stuff behind the wheel. So whether that's covering up, a, you know, whether the original wheel is got any issues, I've no idea. So I think at one point I might take this cover off and see what's underneath. So yeah, that's a sort of summary of the interior. One other thing to say is that there are, of course, two rear seats, which is part of the issue, part of the reason for getting the this convertible is that it just gives me that little bit more practicality. I can hope, hope we can get a baby seat in the back there for my grandson. And yeah, and obviously some more practical space for when I'm doing gigs and want to get some guitars in the back as well as in the boot. Okay, so here we are in the car, and I did have a very quick spin in it, what, about a week ago when, yeah, you, yeah. when you picked it up, and noticeably, 
as you mentioned, the seats are really comfortable yeah, actually. Super comfortable. And the ride quality seems softer. I know. It's, than your Z4. Yeah, and I think some of that is to do with the seats because the seats are just so much more. I mean, you can actually feel. And the ride height is a bit higher. The ride height's a bit higher. Slightly heavier. Yeah. So it's so just it's always going to be a bit bouncier, probably. Yeah. The seats just feel softer. So yeah, is it worth talking about the issue? that we have with this car. I think it's worth a mention, it's just more of a shame than anything, isn't it? Yeah, so basically as I was driving home, having purchased it, Whee! Um, just give it a few beans. Um, the dreaded trifecta, I think they call it, of the ABS lights, the tyre monitor system, and the DTC warning lights all came on. And obviously it was quite alarming because I was literally driving on the M4 and you know, big bong. The and MW then, gong of yeah, death. The gong of death, yeah. And then well, driving stability, drive moderately, and that's supposedly the ABS. Yeah. DBC failure, which I believe is something else Emergency to do. Emergency brake, it's, it's to do with uh, braking assist. Flat tyre monitor failure. Yeah. And start assistance inactive. But the good news is I've got it booked in with RBM Hampshire. Our friend Ross at RBM Hampshire is, you know, just a top guy. That'll be good. At least and then you'll get some get it knowledge out. of what's going on. So what? Because this is this this confused me. Because this is a one two five yes, I, and I thought, oh, it's a two point five SI no, engine. No, it's not. No, it's the three. Li although I'm not sure the two point five SI. I think it's the same engine, the two point SI, which I think is a three liter engine. Oh, I don't know. It's beyond me. Um, but basically, I'm this sure is this is a three liter, not. isn't it? This is a three liter and it's 218 brake horsepower. You just can feel you've got some power under your left foot, you know? I mean, if I just drop down Left now, foot? Actually, probably my right. Yeah. <laughs> How long have I been driving? <laughs> the other advantage of this over your Z4 is obviously we've got six speed. Oh yes, and, I should have to mention um, that. It's super quiet, isn't it? What we're doing is 50 miles an hour, 1500 now. RPM. Yeah, 1500 RPM at 70, it's like two and a half. Really nice. Yeah. And obviously we haven't put the roof down, but with the roof up, and we've had the roof down earlier, and yeah. this huge wind deflector. Yes. It's super civilized. It is. Like, surprising. I couldn't believe how civilized it was. Um, I think you've done really well, because I think when we went into the whole looking for your next car series, yeah. you were looking for something that was basically a, a step up in terms of refinement and practicality yeah. without sacrificing that performance or dynamic ability. Exactly. And I think this is, I think you've ended yeah. up with the right car. Yeah. And the thing that precipitated it all and started it all was you getting that CLK which was a complete you know yes. accident you know to get you back from oh, the red one that I bought for a grand the, the red one you bought for a grand and I've never really before you had that ever even contemplated a four door sorry four seat convertible yeah. it just wasn't on my radar yeah but yeah I'm well chuffed with this and I think the fact that you know we'll, we'll probably demonstrate later that the two of us can fit in the back it is relatively more practical. And can I just say as well, so it's a it's a registered 2011 car. It is. It's only got 72,000 miles yeah. on the clock. It's in this gorgeous and quite rare gray yeah. over red. Yeah. Lovely condition. Yeah. And you paid closer to five than 10,000 for it. I did. Which is, I think, amazing value. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta close the door as well. Oh yeah, for the full experience. Oh, go on then. <laughs> wow. I think my seat's all the way back, you know, so even so. Oh, all the way back? Yeah, I think it is. And mine's in my driving position. Oh, wow, look at that. The I mean, knee I'm... room's good, it's just that the headroom's slightly compromised. Yeah, yeah I mean, our bu your brother would and be... It, um... it would be nice if there was a thing there. Yeah. Yeah, because that was one of the things... Like, just like... <laughs> one of the things that was nice about the... Um... <laughs> about the CLK is it's got a like an armrest, doesn't it? This has a little armrest there, but it's yeah, it's got an armrest too. here. But um, yeah, like you say, the middle. What's this like with the roof down? Do you reckon it'd be slightly nicer? Yeah, I think so. Let's see. So you wouldn't want to be sat in the back. Not really. You get crushed. Well, I think crushed is a slight exaggeration, but. Quite a cool mechanism, isn't it? You know, whereas in the Z4, you've obviously got the roof itself forms the sort of back, you know, at the back. Whereas this has got it, an actual cover. Not bad. So it's not bad. Oh, it? now you can do this though. Ah, yeah. 
Yeah. It would look pretty cool rolling around the streets. Absolutely. Mean streets of London, wouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. <laughs> Finally, the hunt is over for your next car. Phew. And, um, <laughs> well, it'll be interesting, actually, to see how you get on with it. Hopefully, those little problems get sorted. Yeah. Um, Potentially could get that steering wheel retrimmed. Yeah, or or maybe the steering wheel underneath is fine, who knows? They just wanted to just, take a cover. Yeah, we just don't know. Well, the mystery continues, but until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Father, for being in the video once more. It's all right, son. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all very, very soon. Bye. Bye.